Hey everybody. So here I am, parked on the side of the road, in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Like, no one's around. I'm about 45 minutes away from the house. What am I doing here? Let's roll the intro and we'll get into it. Why am I parked in the middle of nowhere? Water. I found this little pole out here, and uh, I'm going to try to take pictures of the Milky Way and maybe even the um, Big Dipper. I'm in a location that has very little light pollution, not much traffic, and it is perfect for astrophotography. And while I'm doing that, I thought I would show you guys my process. First step is to get out into the cold. Minus six. Oh. But it's gonna be worth it because the air is crisp and smooth. All right, let's break everything out of the truck. Ready to get started here. So, first of all, we'll kill the light. And here we have our display. So, while I'm using an Olympus camera, what I'm going to do is make all these instructions um, universal. Uh, you can follow along regardless of the camera type you have. So, first thing you want to do is set to your manual focus there. So, um, you don't want autofocus, obviously, because there's no light and the camera will not be able to autofocus. Uh, the next thing you want to do is, because we're mounted on a tripod, you want to take uh, image stabilization off. So, image stabilizer right now is it was on, now it is off. So, if, if you leave image stabilization on, the camera will kind of hunt a little bit due to the lack of light and it will create a blurry image. As far as white balance goes, we will leave that on auto. The next thing we want to do is adjust our exposure triangle to get the best picture possible in the conditions that we're in. First, we will adjust our exposure time. So see in the bottom there, in the center of the screen, we're changing it uh, in seconds right now. So normally when you take a picture, you're probably in the 6400ths of a second, um, you know, even down to 20, 250ths of a second. We want to push the camera to leave that shutter open for an extended period of time. Okay, so in this instance, uh, we got 20 seconds, as you see on the bottom there, and an aperture of f1.8. This is a pretty wide open aperture. Um, just go to the max that your lens has. Sometimes it may be 3, 3.5, 2.8. Um, set that maximum aperture so the lens is open as wide as possible to let as much light in as you can. Okay, so we'll start with 20 seconds. We can increase that later. Uh, now we'll go to adjust our ISO. Um, we will start with an ISO of 800, and then from there we can fool around with it depending on how much light uh, we get. Okay, now focus. We are in manual focus mode, but we don't have anything to focus on because we can't see because it's obviously dark. The best thing to do is on your lens, you should have a manual focus ring. Set that to infinity and then start dialing that back just a little bit. Take a picture and what we'll do now is because I have manual focus set. So I set it to infinity. We will reduce the time of the picture so this doesn't take forever. So let's do five seconds and let's see how our picture turns out. We'll be able to tell pretty much instantaneously if this is going to be focused or not. Okay, so there we are on our picture, so let's pull it up. If we, if we zoom in, we can see it's kind of blurry. So we know we need to dial that back a bit. On the focus ring, we just went back just a hair. Take another picture. Now let's have a look at that one. a lot better. 
So you may have to take up to five or 10 pictures to get the focus dialed in properly. Um, but once you have it dialed in, you just set it and forget it and you just shoot all night, you're, you're good to go. So that really is, the, is all there is to it. Now you just simply look in the night sky, find the object you want to uh, photograph, tilt your camera so it's pointing at that object you can see here we actually have the you can almost see the big dipper in the viewfinder so if we tilt it up and aim it that way we should be directly looking at the big dipper so we have it set for five seconds let's take a picture of five seconds and see how that turns out so we got a little bit of traffic coming that's created that the, um, uh, that's created all that light there but all right, so let's, that's obviously too dark, so let's bump it up and you, know, we, you can keep playing with it, but I know that uh, 20 seconds is the optimal time for this lens. It's a 17 millimeter lens, so we will max out a 20 and take a picture and see what it looks like. So now we're back in the studio. I have imported the pictures from my camera onto my computer. Uh, I have processed them through Lightroom to bring out some details and just make them pop a little bit. This first picture is of the Big Dipper uh, overlooking um, Shushwap Lake with uh, Scotch Creek in the background. The reason I chose this location is because of the lake right there and reflecting the lights from the uh, buildings uh, on the far shore. Really made for a nice uh, foreground, if you will, um, to balance out the, uh, the star field above. Um, and I did process it, like I said, to bring out the, uh, the Big Dipper there. But I really didn't do too much to it. Um, if you get your settings right in the first place, it makes post-processing a lot quicker and a lot simpler because there's not as much to correct. So in this instance, I ended up taking uh, the picture uh, on a setting of uh, aperture setting f1.8. The shutter speed was 20 seconds and the ISO was set at 800. I don't like to go any higher than 800, even 1600 tops, because I find it adds a lot of green to the image. And at that point, I might as well just bump up the exposure in Lightroom because I feel it handles it a little better. Um, in this picture, it's kind of interesting. You'll see some streaks all throughout the picture. Um, most of those are, um, are satellites moving through the picture. Uh, almost dead center, uh, inside the uh, Big Dipper, you'll see a long streak with some, some dots in a row, Looks like someone just connected the dots. That's actually an airplane flying through the picture and uh, every one of those dots is the position light flashing so um, just some cool little things you'll pick up on as you're, you're doing uh, astrophotography uh, the next picture here I ended up all I did was point the camera straight up to get some of that Milky Way so it kind of starts in the upper left hand and kind of slopes down towards the green tree there um, the tree was actually lit up by the passing traffic so it's kind of making the best of a bad situation. The, as the traffic were to pass, the, the lights from the headlights would actually create light pollution and it would make the star field a little grainier than it normally would if they weren't there. However, I thought it was a pretty cool thing to add that tree on the side just to give it a little bit of contrast and work with the situation that, uh, that I was given. So again, a little bit of editing in Lightroom just to bring things out a little more. But um, yeah, I thought this was a really, uh, shot as well on this picture again the I didn't change any of the settings because it, it worked for the first picture aperture of f1.8 20 seconds and ISO 800 it was absolutely freezing that night I didn't have time to do a proper outro so I thought I would kind of bring you guys into the studio here and show you how uh, what these final pictures look like so that is my process so get out there guys start taking pictures and I would love to see the pictures you take. Uh, let me see how you guys are making out with uh, with your astrophotography. Post comments on my YouTube page here, or on my Instagram or Facebook. Tag me in the picture. Let me see what you guys can come up with. And uh, please like this video if it helped you out. Subscribe because it helps me out. And we will see you in the next one.